Can you recall a time that in your career you were sure that you had, quote, made it? And then as things happen in this town, <coughs> you never really make it until you've actually received the check or you show up or whatever. There's so many variables. And then another time when you thought I'd never work again in this business and you were, you were pleasantly surprised. Uh, well, there are times I thought I'd never make it in this business. I remember being in New York City as a young actor, you know, and um, I graduated from NYU School of the Arts and I got a part in the, in the Nero Ensemble Company and that was pretty prestigious and worked a couple more gigs as an actor, a stage actor. And then um, couldn't pay my rent. Um, didn't work for six, six or eight months. Unemployment ran out and I ended up panhandling on the street. And well, before that, I, me and my girlfriend used to steal. <laughs> we put on these trench coats even in the summertime and we sewed these big pockets on the inside. We'd go to the AMP supermarket and we'd put meat and stuff in them. And we'd buy like maybe some cereal and just, that was a low, low, low point. Um, then I panhandled and um, it was like, I was a drug head, you know. Then I found transcendental meditation and other things and that saved my life. Another times would be uh, when it, Palmerstown USA was a hit show on, I think, CBS. Uh, Alex Haley and Norman Lear, a couple of seasons, making great money, high lifestyle. I said, okay, now I've done this, I've proved myself as an actor. Didn't work for two years. It's like, it made me really question my talent. Quit acting, went to the American Film Institute. American Film Institute uh, made a film there and short and uh, called The Hero, got awards and stuff. Nobody would buy it. Nobody would take me as an actor, as a director. Got depressed, went away to a meditation retreat. David Jake, um, my agent calls me and says, come in to right away um, to, because uh, David Jacobs wants to see you um, possibly to shoot Knott's Landing. I was there, I went back, drove so fast, got back. On Monday I was in David Jacobs' office. He and I talked, said thank you. Went home, got a call from my agent, you're hired, Knott's Landing. I called everybody I knew, man, it's just like, Heaven, heaven, heaven. Uh, Joe Wallenstein, the producer, on the last day of prep, called me to office, office, his office and said, Bill, great prep. We know you would make it, man, because you're great, good. You could tell by your reel. I said, what reel? I said, well, the reel that you sent us from your other shows. I said, I, said, I just got out of AFI, man. I just got my, he says, wait a minute. Goes in David Jacobs' office. David Jacobs had mixed my box up with somebody else's. So I got hired by mistake. So they followed me around for the first three days once they knew what I was doing. And that was one of the higher points of my career because it was like, I, th I mean, I got multiple episodes of that show and multiple episodes of other shows and based upon that particular triumph for me. And that was, because I was at low and then I came to a high. Then I directed like, you know, Sister Act 2 and other films and Hoodlum and movies, but you know, it's like you think, okay, I've proven myself here, but if it doesn't make the ex a certain amount of money, no matter, if it, if it breaks even, makes a certain profit, okay, but for most of us that are black directors in this industry, if it doesn't just blow the roof off, it's uh, not easy.